Today we're going to speak on Romans 4, which, um, as you know, I've been going through the book of Romans, and I've done the first three chapters, and Romans 4 says, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? He's asking a question concerning Father Abraham. Uh, was his flesh sufficient to save him? Was it sufficient to uh, bring him closer to God? And when he says flesh, that means the uh, covenant of circumcision. For if Abraham was justified by works, meaning circumcision or not eating certain foods or anything like that, if he was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. He's saying that all of these things that we do, people will go up to God and they'll say, look at I was circumcised, or I was, uh, you know, uh, I was a Pharisee, or I, was, I didn't eat these certain foods, or I observed the Sabbath day. All of these works. And... Paul is saying we have no right to do that before God. God is infinitely holy and we violated his law and so we have no right to boast before him. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. This is going back to the first time that God met with Abraham. God made him a promise. He said, look up at the stars in the sky. You'll see uh, as many as the stars in the sky will be your descendants. And he looked up and he says, wow, I believe. And the Bible says that God credited that to him for righteousness. And he goes into Galatians, the book of Galatians, and he explains that this happened long before he received the covenant of circumcision. We are circumcised by faith and not by works. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. In other words, if we do the deeds of the law, we go out and we uh, observe the Sabbath or we get circumcised or any other deeds of the law. If we do these things, then we would be justified by works. And that would mean that there is no grace involved in our salvation. But in fact, the Bible says contrary. It says that we are saved by grace. And grace is unmerited favor. And therefore, we, um, we have unmerited favor and works are not counted in our justification. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. This is speaking of the person that doesn't do any work. He doesn't, the guy hanging on the cross next to Jesus, he was a criminal. He was dying because of uh, his unrighteous life. He put his faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus said, surely I tell you, you will, today you will be with me in paradise. He didn't do anything, good or bad, to deserve that. He just simply believed he acknowledged Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and he went to paradise that day with Jesus. I mean, it's that simple. And it's the same thing with us. There's no boasting because we've done nothing to merit God's favor. We only put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It is He, Jesus Christ, who justifies. Just as David also describes the blessedness of man to whom God imputes righteousness, apart from works. Imputes is a word that says, I have something, I'm giving it to you without you paying for it. Imputation, it's a trade. Jesus Christ died perfectly holy, I died in sin, or as a sinner, but I put my faith in him, he gives me his righteousness, and he took my sin at the cross of Calvary. And David will speak of this. It says, quoting the Psalms, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessedness is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. David had sinned, he'd committed uh, adultery with Bathsheba, he'd um, murdered Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, he took a census against uh, God's, uh, contrary to God's command, he did these things and God was upset and he received certain penalties for it and yet God did not impute the sin to him. He was forgiven, not because of anything he did but because of God's great mercy and grace. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also. For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Okay? He's asking, is this imputation of grace an unmerited favor given to only the circumcised people, such as David, or was it somebody else? And then he cites Abraham again. How then was it accounted while he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while, uncircum not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised, okay? Remember I said that this is explained in Galatians? Well, here it is explained in Romans 4 also. Abraham had not yet been circumcised, and yet he received God's grace and unmerited favor. This happened before the time that he was circumcised. And he looked up at the stars. God made him a promise. He believed God, and God credited it to him for righteousness before he'd done anything. He had just simply believed. 
And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised. He had done no work, and yet he was given that sign of righteousness, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. I hope you understand that, that he is the father of anybody that believes without doing a work, without being circumcised, without restraining, uh, uh, by restraining from eating certain foods or whatever. Anything that we try to do to please God only becomes a stumbling block for God's grace in our lives. Because here we're saying, I can do this and I can do that and I can receive God's favor. I can give 10% to the church. That is totally unbiblical. We don't do anything to receive God's favor. When we give to the church, we should do it out of a sense of gratitude, not out of a sense of obligation. And tithing is totally mispreached in the uh, uh, churches around America anyway, so someday maybe I'll do a talk on tithing. Believe me, you have been lied to about it, and someday I, I hope that you will take the time to read Deuteronomy 14.22 to the end of the chapter, Deuteronomy 26.12, and Amos 4.4, 4, and you will see the tithing is totally mis misrepresented anyway. But we're not under the law, we're under grace, and we're not, tithing is set aside in Christ as part of the law, so we're to give as we feel we're blessed, and by the uh, righteousness and grace that Christ has imputed to us. Anyway, I don't mean to get off on a side tangent, but it's an it's a issue that really bothers me. Um, and the father of circumcision to those who, are not o who not only are of circumcision, but also walk in the steps of faith which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. So he's saying, even those who have been circumcised need to walk in the same faith of Abraham. You can't say, I've been circumcised and therefore I can receive God's favor. That's not, it, it, the Bible doesn't allow that. We are totally saved by grace through faith. And any works that we do don't get us any closer to God. And in fact, they usually separate us from God because then we start trusting in our own righteousness, something we don't have in and of ourselves. It is an imputed righteousness, that of God, Jesus Christ, who lived the perfect life and gave us his righteousness so that we can stand before an infinitely holy God covered by his shed blood and not by our own unrighteous deeds. For the promise that he would not, that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Abraham was promised to be heir of the world and it was done on faith. He said, look up at the stars in the sky, count them if you can, that is how many descendants you'll have. And Abraham looked up and he said, unbelievable, look at all those stars. You know, a couple nights ago, I was with my wife who's sitting over here listening. She came to Montana to be with me and she's traveling for about three weeks. And on the way home from the airport in Montana, we were on a highway and we stopped. There's not a light within miles of us, not a car going by. And I said, come out here, I wanna show you something. It was so dark, I couldn't even see my truck because my truck is black. I pulled her out of the car on the side of the road and I said, look up at the stars in the sky. And she said, I can't believe how beautiful it is. I've never seen anything like it. There, the Milky Way shot across the heavens. It illuminated the whole sky. It was absolutely beautiful. And that is what Abraham would have saw because there weren't cities back then to cloud the skies. It was just the desert. It was this land of Canaan or actually uh, up in Mesopotamia where it would have been very dark, but the stars would have been so numerous that he, there's no way he could have counted them. And that's what it was like a couple nights ago in Montana. I ask any of you that haven't traveled these beautiful United States to get out there and travel them because uh, it, there's a world of wonder that God has given us in these 50 states. The governor here, as I said, I met him and he said, come and spend money in Idaho. Well, I'll spend a little bit of money today thanking him for his kindness to us and allowing us to stand here and do this. But understand that Abraham was the father of, of faith. And everybody that is like him, that trusts God apart from works, is a son of Abraham by faith alone. We can do nothing to inherit God's grace and mercy except he just gives it to us. We accept it by faith. It's wonderful how good God is to us because instead of giving us condemnation, he gives us his own son's righteousness. 